Assalamu alaikum. You're watching Views and News, and I'm Faisal Rahman live from our Islamabad studios. Today, we'll be talking about this uh, Park Akhwan border fencing issue. The foreign minister stated the other day, uh, and he acknowledged that there were some complications, and they'll be sorted out soon. Uh, before I introduce you to our panelists today, our production team has prepared a report. Let's watch that first, and after that, I'll introduce you to our panelists, and we'll start our talk. Pakistan, an immediate neighbor of Afghanistan, which shares a border of almost 2670 kilometers with Afghanistan, is extensively engaged in the vigorous and constructive efforts to tread the war battered country on the pathway to prosperity since the Taliban has seized the power in Afghanistan. However, recently the reported incidents of Taliban soldiers disrupting the erection of a security fence by the Pakistani military along the border between the two countries has raised certain concerns regarding the actual approach of Taliban rulers towards Pakistan in the internationally recognized Durand line between the two countries. Afghan Defense Ministry spokesman Anaitullah Khwarizmi has also claimed reportedly that Taliban stopped the Pakistan military from erecting an illegal border fence along the eastern province of Nangarhar. Besides, he said that things were normal. Moreover, Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi on January 3, 2022 also said that Islamabad has taken up the issue of Pak Afghan border fencing with the Taliban government in Kabul and the issue would be resolved diplomatically. He added that the miscreants are raising this issue unnecessarily. Pakistan, though, is consistently engaged at almost all the diplomatic levels to make Afghanistan a constructive political and economic entity in the region as well as in the international arena. Still, Pakistan never turned a blind eye towards its vital and core na national security interests. And this fact has to be conveyed diplomatically and assertively to the Taliban rulers of Afghanistan. And now to talk about it, let me introduce you to our panelists. We have with us in our studio on my right is Dr. Manzoor Afridi Saab. He's an expert on international relations and in particular on Afghanistan. Thank you so much, Afridi Saab, for your presence. And we also have with us Brigadier Retired Said Nazir Saab, who's a senior analyst. So thank you so much you, for your presence also. And on Skype, we have with us Dr. Akab Malik, uh, who is an expert on foreign affairs and international relations. Thank you very much, Akab, for your time as well. Now, starting off uh, from you, Dr. Manzoor Afridi, uh, first of all, this fencing issue was perhaps very important in order to curb uh, the uh, smuggling issue or perhaps the terrorist infiltration that was taking place. And we were able to almost complete it 90% plus. Now, the issue has been uh, again picked up by the Afghan Taliban. And they said that there is no need to have this fence. Whereas the foreign minister, Shah Mahmood Qureshi, he said that um, he had a word uh, uh, and acknowledged that on Monday, that there were some complications. Let's start off from the sub some complication issue, sir. I mean, if it was sorted out and we almost completed the border fencing, sir, and I'm not talking about a small area, you're talking about some huge uh, part between Pakistan and Afghanistan. That is a porous border, as we all know. So I think that was a great initiative taken by the government of Pakistan in particular. So I think um, hats off to the Pakistan army, who ended up completing this huge task. Your take? Well, uh, the fencing between Pakistan and Afghanistan has been started uh, in uh, summer 2017. So it's uh, almost uh, four and a half years for the last four and a half that uh, this fencing uh, has been stretched uh, between the two countries. And this uh, um, border uh, between uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan <coughs> it is uh, almost 26 or 2700 uh, kilometer long. It is porous, mostly it is mountainous, uh, so very difficult to uh, uh, have monitoring and to control this border. So we have seen for the last 20 years uh, since uh, the war on terror started that half this border has been used by various forces uh, legally and uh, mostly illegally. And you also stated about the drug smuggling or uh, smuggling of weapons or some other things and infiltrations, the illegal migration by by, by uh, refugees and so many other factors. So of course it has created some problems between the two countries. We have uh, to look at uh, into uh, the history. I mean uh, that it's, it's not the story of one year or even not the story of big 20 years, but since 1947 or even before that since 
1893 when this border uh, was signed between the uh, Sir Henry Mortimer Durand and uh, the Amir Abdurrahman of Afghanistan. And since that, that uh, uh, the political issue was uh, made uh, between the two countries. And later on, uh, we have seen that in the initial days of Pakistan, what kind of relationship was there between the two countries. And later on, uh, so many in King Zahir Shah period and then Sardar Dawood. And after the socialist regimes of Nur Muhammad Tarake, Hafiz Ulamin, Babra Karmal, and Dr. Najibullah, mm -hmm. after that, even in Mujahideen government and the Taliban uh, government, and uh, now, especially uh, in the uh, two tenures of Hamid Karzai, and also the two or one and a half, I would say, uh, tenures of Dr. Ashraf Ghani, that uh, we have, I mean, Pakistan and Afghanistan, they have so many skirmishes or clashes on this border. First, let's recognize that uh, the, the monitoring of this border is very necessary for both countries because Afghanistan is situated in such a place which is, which is uh, you know, a center between Central Asia and South Asia. That's correct. So this is the era of regional integration. So many projects have been launched now to be facilitated to get benefit of all these projects. Let's to focus on this border. No doubt there are, there, there are some issues. For example, some people, they live on the Pakistan side and some of the same tribe on the Afghanistan side of Momand or Wazir, Mesud or some other tribes. So let's to have some facilitation for them, but to control these things, I mean the illegal things, which create problems and issues in longer term for both countries to have check and balance on them and a strict monitoring of this uh, border. Even the United States of America and even NATO forces, they always, you know, stressed have to control this border. So in this new situation where Afghan Taliban, mm -hmm. they are in government, now uh, they are government entity. In this regard, they have to focus on th this border because there are so many issues, humanitarian crisis there. Absolutely. Their Absolutely. economy, mm -hmm. you know, it is at very much risk. So to have, uh, recognition from international community to have uh, uh, normal relations uh, and even uh, further to say friendly relations with neighboring countries of Afghanistan uh, and to have this trade route between Pakistan and Afghanistan either to through Torham or Chaman or other opening points of the border to have smooth trade let's to strengthen more security on, on this border. I think that's in the interest of both countries, both Pakistan and Afghanistan. So in this time of need where the Afghan government that is in so much search of recognition internationally, so let's to have stability on the border and to, to control it because problems if create on either side of the two countries, it would disturb the peace and stability of both countries. Absolutely, totally agree with that. Now, sir, uh, the Foreign Minister of Pakistan, Shah Mahmood Qureshi Saab, has in fact uh, blamed certain miscreants. And they, he in fact mentioned that uh, they are uh, <coughs> blowing it out of proportion. And there were certain videos which were released and uh, where the, uh, the Taliban, they were in fact, uh, you know, they were breaking it and they were pulling apart. Uh, the the fence now sir this is about 2600 kilometers of fence that we are talking about and again uh, Shah Saab mentioned that uh, he has a uh, word with the uh, Afghan authorities also so when he says certain miscreants are blowing this issue out of proportion let's explain that let's throw light on this aspect who are well, those actually, miscreants? Once we see to the history as uh, Dr. Manzoor has explained need not to go into that uh, there is no government that may be of a communist, that may be of uh, the Emirates, or that may be of Karzai, or Ashraf Ghani, or even Bacha Saka will come, but they will not openly, because it is a political murder for mm -hmm. them to recognize this border. Mm -hmm. Somehow or the other, the misperception regarding this border is on the different line, they call it. And they say that one perception that will, it was having a uh, in time by 100 years which completed 1893 and then uh, second was well it was forced on them and third is that well uh, both Pakhtuns are on both sides and we are one end so there should be no border. 
so these misperceptions are there cultural issue sir no it is basically a political issue for survival mm -hmm. and uh, some of the other the countries which are hostile to pakistan are the agencies they are playing it also up and third thing is that along this border once america and nato was there it was not in their control their rate was not there and so goes to the taliban which is almost above for 5 months well in this time mm -hmm. you cannot expect that they will be having complete control on that so as far as the question of miscreant is concerned will there are certain maybe rouge element that may be doing it mm -hmm. second thing is that since the the ttp ahrar daesh and other groups al qaeda etc they are jilled so far they were jilled in one so now probably they may be also creating such sort of problem along the border because basically nangrahar and kunad and all these area those people are there but at the same time which to which uh, dr saab has pointed out there was uh, a class of uh, uh, easement rights for the people of uh, tribal area both sides masood are there and so goes to the wazir so goes to the mehman shinwaris and all they are having their lands there as well as on that side and uh, both have got the yeah, right to cultivate also. the families yeah. and so many divided mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. so this board this fence is too close to the border and uh, that has restricted that particular movement of the people to people contact one second thing the same could have uh, thing would have been possible which probably i uh, proposed it at many forums that instead of that if a uh, dual carriage way has been drawn uh, along the border so on both side would have been the fence and regular or conventional routes would have been open for proper documentation and the unconventional routes would have been stopped uh, it would have solved for the mobile patrolling picketing as well as the trade route and people connectivity and so many uh, benefits would would have been accrued but some of the other it culminated now so it. this particular uh, fence or, or the uh, boundary or the demarcation perhaps is it acceptable to the general public living out there sir actually that what is the misperception that it is not acceptable to them in that due to that that cloud which has been created otherwise this particular issue is not on any international forum the all every afghan government wants because their consulate is in peshawar mm -hmm. and first of all they should close that consulate which is in the the kupaid are in a area which belongs to them and third thing is that it is properly demarcated with the commissions which were set and then in 1921 again it was uh, again ratified again by the afghan government and the british government and after that after 47 it is an international recognition recognized border there is no issue about that but there are elements number one that is india of course which has fueled it and this propaganda has been on and on and on. and certain elements are there in pakistan as well who are also of the same uh, view point political parties. and fourth thing is mm -hmm. that unless this particular thing is removed so i don't think that we should be it is an irritant not a big issue got right. it it would be sorted uh, out and more so it should be kept on the low key in the diplomatic level mostly silent diplomacy and third thing is that it should not be blown out of proportion as the foreign minister has said because that is not to our interest and fourth thing we should be connected to afghanistan on many fronts that may people to people mm -hmm. that may be trade that may be the education that may be health that may be the the bridge uh, which which uh, afghanistan can create up to the central asia and so goes once uh, they are integrated in the cpec so all these things will automatically then fade out so probably a soft approach will be better than adopting a hard approach but this issue needs to be resolved yeah so that in, in the current times because when you talk about 1893 sir or 1921 perhaps things have changed over a period of time either they should have done it much before or if they have done it last let's say during the last 4 5 years it has to be acceptable to both the people living in that particular area because you know if uncle is living on the other side and the nephew is living on on mm. this side so this is exactly the situation mm, yeah. let's talk to Uh, Dr. Okab Malik about this issue. Dr. Saab, your take on this very important issue, I would say, uh, neglected or perhaps uh, 
I think it was on the back burner, but now uh, the foreign minister also spoke about it. And interestingly, uh, what we have seen in certain videos that uh, the Taliban uh, fighters, they have been, uh, you know, they're not accepting this particular fence or the boundary that has been erected by the Pakistan army. And perhaps, if not now, at some stage, this could escalate. Your take? Well, I believe that the, the situation has been going on for a long time. It's not new. It's not a misperception. I think there are real grievances uh, on both sides regarding the border. Um, you have to look at the history. I'm not going to go into history. I think it's long-winded, really. Um, but but the, this situation has been on the boil between Afghanistan and Pakistan since the 1960s and before. So uh, it's not a bad matter of... Uh, one side taking over the other. Pakistan has unilaterally uh, um, put the border fence up. Um, there was no negotiations with another side. They just thought that the Taliban would agree because Pakistan has been very helpful to them over many years. The, the issue is that the, the Taliban have never agreed. Uh, even in the previous time, the 1990s, nor has any Afghan government. So I think when it comes down to it, really, there needs to be uh, political negotiations to settle the matter for once and for all. Um, there, there's not much choice in that. Um, there's, there is a grievance of um, the Afghans uh, on this border, and it has historical implications. And they would they would say that uh, it's same that is the case for uh, Taiwan and China, or Kashmir, or Palestine. The, this is the situation that they put it in. It is not being on the on the horizon because Afghanistan has been in turmoil for 43 years. So as a result, uh, nobody's really thought about it much. Now that Afghanistan's going to hopefully face um, um, the forthcoming future with, with relative peace and harmony, let's hope so, um, without external interference, that they may have to discuss this in a formal manner with Pakistan and vice versa. Both parties need to really rectify the situation and resolve it for once and for all. I think the grievances are not a misperception. I disagree with that completely. There are real grievances on the Afghan side and Pakistan side about what is actually happening here. Uh, it's been imposed because Pakistan is much more powerful at this moment in time to Afghanistan, which was not the case many centuries ago uh, when Pakistan wasn't about actually. But, 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 but this situation will arise again and again. In fact, uh, looking back, one of the precursors and reasons as to why the Afghan conflict came about in the first place was the Pashtunistan issue uh, and this particular border. So I think it's, we shouldn't really take it lightly. Uh, I think it's very important that we, we uh, give it due regard uh, and the importance that it deserves. And Qureshi, he's just a politician. Uh, let me tell you this. He may be the foreign minister at this moment in time, but he will change. Other people will come up with a different idea. And... Politicians invariably lie about everything they want to lie about just to get out of a situation. So I don't really agree with him at all. All right. Now, about uh, the situation, uh, that is a small issue. It is a large issue that needs to be resolved, and it will take time to resolve this. Let's put, put it where it really is. This well, that, that should be the way forward. Definitely. But coming to you, Afri, this have now another very important area because, you know, uh, Dr. Kapp talked about uh, the foreign minister as a politician. It's a political statement. The issue was there, is there, and perhaps will remain there as well, you know, unless until it is properly sorted out. He said that uh, this issue has been blown out of proportion, one. Then he says Taliban spokesperson in Afghanistan's acting information minister, Zabiullah Mujahid's statement seems to suggest otherwise. What he said, Zabiullah Mujahid said there was no need of, for border fencing by Pakistan as the issue of the Durant line has not been resolved. So this is the official statement of the Taliban regime at the moment, sir. What is that supposed to be? Uh, well, uh, actually, uh, now the Taliban, um, who are the rulers of Kabul now, uh, they also need uh, the support of people. No doubt that uh, this issue, uh, it has been rooted in the Afghan society, and uh, it is uh, uh, very much laden uh, with the emotions of the common masses. So, uh, historically speaking, um, if we see through the history uh, for the last uh, 120, 27, 8 years, 
So it is there, no doubt. And it has been uh, picked by various governments at Kabul, or various political parties or forces there. So now where uh, the Taliban, they are in need uh, to search friends uh, or to at least to have sympathy of the people, of the masses. To, so they have, uh, you know, to, 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 to have this issue uh, more to be highlighted in this regard. Uh, because we can't deny the fact that, uh, no, it's, it's nowhere uh, the issue is, or it's um, even not an issue. No, it is there. So we have to talk. Uh, with them and uh, as I told earlier that uh, it's in the interest of both governments mm -hmm. that we have to recognize and of course uh, we have to move forward I mean both countries uh, from just only the political statements to the real and concrete solution of this problem uh, there is a solution for every uh, issue and uh, as far as uh, the people, they are concerned on both sides, where they have families or they have lands. No doubt that there uh, can be some regular, you know, meeting points or crossing points for them that uh, they can visit either side. But uh, uh, to have control on this uh, border, so it is in the interest of both countries. Uh, that they can uh, not only, uh, you know, to normalize their relations because this border, it is one of the irritating elements between the two countries. So if it is solved, of course, there are so many other avenues where we can cooperate with one another. Afghanistan can join the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. We can also extend our more cooperation and uh, more you know trade ru routes to mm -hmm. be established with central asian republics pakistan is already permanent member afghanistan is observer state and sco uh, afghanistan is also there a member and sark so on the one side if uh, there is india where sark is not working on the other side of course there is afghanistan where uh, we put uh, in the shanghai cooperation organization mm -hmm. so by this uh, you know uh, by this framework, uh, both countries, they have no way but just sit together and they have to talk. And one important thing that uh, Afghanistan, that is a tribal society, and uh, from where this border that is going through, there's also the tribal, mostly the tribal land on the Pakistan side. And even in Balochistan, if you see, so there are also the tri again? tribal Pashtuns. Mm. So they have very much strong connections. And this issue can be solved on both fronts and let's to have parallel, uh, uh, to have efforts on both fronts. I mean, one, the, the uh, government level, that uh, um, especially Pashtuns, uh, that they can move forward. And second, on the people level, on the elders level, and uh, uh, before uh, in the socialist regime in Afghanistan, and even before that in the King Zahir Shah period, uh, right many right. times both the elders of the uh, you know, tribal chiefs on both sides of Pakistan and Afghanistan, they have talked on so many issues. So then we can reach to a, a durable solution. Now one more important factor, uh, and that is about the killing of the Maliks and the tribal chiefs in that particular part uh, by the Tariqe Taliban Pakistan in particular, sir. Now, what sort of a vacuum that has created, sir, uh, when you talk about dialogue or the trust uh, deficit issue or perhaps, you know, how to cooperate and move forward? Yeah, that's, that's very important and pertinent issue. Um, yes, uh, in the war on terror, but what we have seen in the last uh, 20 years, so so many tribal chiefs or Maliks, they have been killed. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, a <coughs> hierarchy that was disturbed, where exactly. a tribal chief <coughs> was considered very much instrumental in this regard, to have a connection between the masses and the political agent. I mean, what we call now the deputy commissioner of an agency now. That's the tribal district. I district. think political agent was one of the most powerful Very person. much powerful, very much. So, uh, but now, uh, I think th there is important era now that the ex-FATA now it's merged with Khyber Pakhtunkhwa mm -hmm. province. 
now. So again, uh, the, the tribal chief uh, authority, you know, that is hereditary. So first uh, Amen, then his son, then his son. So there are tribal chiefs again there. And uh, uh, even uh, uh, beyond the political level, uh, on, the, on the cultural terms, if we talk, mm. on the tribal uh, terms. So that is uh, not only hundreds, but I would say even thousand years old, uh, that kind of the bond, uh, what uh, it unites the whole tribe. So I think it's very much possible. So many organizations are the uh, non-governmental organizations, forums on both sides, especially here in Pakistan, they are working for the track to diplomacy to have more connection on the people <laughs> level, to have more people to people contact. We, we know that our Afghan brethren, they are in so much need of health and education and trade, business activity and so many others. So for all these things, of course, the security of border that's very much necessary and I would again say that uh, not only on the government level but on the citizen level, on the masses level, on the tribal chiefs level, this issue can be solved and very much I think uh, with durable solution mm -hmm. we, we can move forward. All right. Now, bring us up another important factor. Again, I would refer to Zabillah Mujahid when he said that uh, people living on both sides of the border, they have uh, connections with each other and fencing was creating a disconnect between them. Now, uh, we all know why uh, the government of Pakistan decided to erect this fence. Infiltration was the first issue because we never wanted that people from the other side or miscreants perhaps or the terrorists should be coming into uh, Pakistan. We have already flushed them out. So we need a very secure border. You think, sir, if this issue is not sorted out and uh, similar activities continue to happen when you'll see them removing the fence, uh, what sort of effect is it going to have between the very important relationship of the Taliban and the government of Pakistan? And secondly, sir, in particular, when you talk about the people living out there. Well, of course, as far as the people living there, uh, they are from almost hundreds and hundreds of years. And after the creation of Pakistan, again, the name uh, people are there. And this border was for 70 years guarded by those people. There was not a check post. There was no fence. There was nothing as such. Mm. And it was guarded and it was guarded properly. Absolutely. Second thing is that uh, once those people were responsible in doing it, now, after the fence, why this issue has come up? It means fence is an irritant. If it is an irritant, and this irritant is blown beyond proportion, suppose the so local... The issue has no, been raised no, just, from their just side, some, not no, from this that side. Was, that's what I say. That if the tribes on that side are agitated by some, suppose, in uh, miscreants, some hostile uh, intelligence agencies, or the big game again is being played in this area, Will the environment will not be suiting for that and that will be detrimental to the relationship rather the very existence of both the country in peace and prosperity that will be. So we should not give a chance to such sight of elements uh, which can blow it out of proportion and make it an issue. Second thing is this border as far as the relations are concerned if they, they, it is not that much uh, uh, pronounced in the relations. But on the social media and on the propaganda side, which is again by some interested elements or unwanted elements, mm -hmm. and more so uh, by uh, some mindset which has been created, there is no other significant of, significance of that. But we should not, the, uh, the Taliban will be playing to the gallery, especially their people are believing as such, and more so, so were the previous governments. So I suppose at local level, that is the commander or governor level, or most, more so at the low key diplomatic, diplomatic level, it should be resolved. It should not be given a, 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 a sort of a status or elevated to an extent that it becomes a real a thorn in the relations, one. Second thing is that soft borders is nowadays, of course, uh, that is the, 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 uh, buzz of, the buzzword. So soft border with trade, it gets strengthened. People to people contact, it gets strengthened. Then the relationship and the dependability. Afghanistan is of course a landlocked country 
and it is dependent on Pakistan on many things. So why not to take advantage of that and uh, rather strengthen the soft power than the hard power. Then uh, I must draw your attention towards the, uh, our national uh, security policy. There are also uh, economics, trade, people to people connectivity. Afghanistan is a bridge and reach to the Central Asia, resource utilization, exploitation. So all these things are coming through that way. And if that is addressed, I suppose people will be dependent on each other. They will not disturb the peace equation. One, they will not disturb the border issue. And fourth thing is that if people see that there is prosperity coming out of this connectivity, of course, which is necessary for the CPEC to be connected to the Central Asia. And of course, China is having a stakes in there. So why not to have a regional approach? And more so, I have said it in many programs as well, that we have got an arch rival rather an enemy on the eastern side. So we cannot go there. The only avenue open to us is the western side. And there is Afghanistan and Iran. So through Afghanistan, we can reach the Central Asia. Why we are hyphenating ourselves, Pak, Pak India? Why not Pak Afghan? Why not Pak Central Asia? So that will be the approach that we are where look, uh, our look, our vision, and our strengths will be there. That will be bonded. Uh, and strength from, from both the sides. So goes to the Afghan. There are so many opportunities. Top P is there. Casa 1000 is there. Then there is another that vision that they are having a road link uh, and railway link up to Peshawar from Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, and so goes to the Chaman border as well. So how much connectivity will be coming? So I suppose such sort of irritants, uh, it should be addressed uh, silently, and I suppose uh, use of hard power or giving it more boost, that will not be appropriate. As far as the uh, Dr. Seb Saab has raised the issue of perception. Once something is settled internationally and a recognized border by all the nations, and there is no documentary proof that it is not a border, there were proper commissions which were established on both the sides. For three years, they were demarcating it, and they know it. So <laughs> what could be else the perception when somebody says, well, it is not a border? That is the misperception. If you got a tangible, I, I, I'll tangible. Just, I'll, I'll just raise another very important point, and I'll take that point to uh, Dr. Kaab Malik. Dr. Saab, recently what we witnessed was that um, the Indians there changed their map. And I'm talking about um, the northwestern side of their uh, map, in which they included Azad Kashmir, and they also included Gilgit Baltistan. And whenever you Google uh, the map of India, sir, the new map is going to... Uh, be you know shown on the screen number one and over a period of time it seems that uh, the Indians as if they they it's not that they claim they claim everything interestingly but what I'm saying is that uh, maybe 20 years 20 years down the line the next generation of the Indians would start believing in that whereas when it comes to the border demarcation Pakistan and Afghanistan is concerned I mean it has been a very clear-cut line, sir. But now, since the tribal areas, they have been merged with the KP government, sir. A, what sort of a difference will it make? And secondly, sir, uh, do you also believe that there are certain entities, other than the Taliban, uh, perhaps uh, the word miscreants was used for them. And if they, they exist, who are they? Dr. Saab? I'll answer one by one. Yes, India has been doing this with the maps for quite a while. It's nothing new. Um, it's a, a, a form of uh, psychological warfare to get their own population or international community thinking that um, Kashmir or Gilgit Baldassan is part of India. Um, this is what they've claimed for many times. Um, our alternative is that we can make a map with um, Jumma Kashmir on our side. So. It's a it's a cat and mouse game, really. I think I think everybody recognizes what the situation is, and it's something to uh, have a perception of 
and induce certain perception within their country to keep the uh, conflict alive in essence, but also to maintain the essence of uh, uh, their, their uh, need to want it back. So I think it goes for both sides, really. Um, as far as um, Afghanistan is concerned, um, when it comes to uh, miscreants, for example, um, yes, you're right. I believe that uh, Tariq e Taliban Pakistan have have an inherent interest to gain and regain uh, touch with their community within within Pakistan. I mean, this is where they came from, and the the tribal areas going into Pakhtunkhwa, I think, was one of the best things that could happen uh, to that region, where the tribal limitations, the imposition of a uh, the, F, uh, the the uh, crimes regulations, for example, were rescinded and it became part of the province. Uh, it's the best thing that could happen to the tribal areas to allow it to develop as as a province. I think there, there's no doubt about that. That was a, a success for the country, in fact. This would undermine the tariq taliban and their claims in different tribal areas. Now they've been killing different maliks, yes. There are the types of people who were uh, and the tribal leaders who were against Tariq e Taliban. Uh, I know some of these personally who have been shot at and uh, seriously injured. I talked to them many times before, uh, afterwards. Uh, and the reasons why, because they didn't support these terrorist groups at all. And they, they sided with the country. Now, the thing is that they're obviously targets because they're leadership positions within the tribal community. And as a result, to uh, to reduce the effect of the tribal community to impose their own values on it, they're going to try to reduce the leadership uh, and disorganize the people there. Given that the tribal areas have gone into Pakhtunkhwa, that tribal leadership has not got the same significance as it had before, because now part of the provincial government and doesn't have the separate entity and power status that it had before. So this goes against the interest, in essence, of the Riki Taliban and other parties. Which are no doubt being funded by foreign elements. Now, Dr. Sab, another important area. I mean, do you believe that uh, obviously smuggling, that's an issue in that part? Uh, and uh, a lot of smugglers, I mean, obviously they don't want the fence to be, to be there. Because obviously it's a porous border and there is no fence. I mean, it's easy for them to, you know, move from one place to another. And secondly, another important factor is that uh, other than the... Uh, smugglers, it is also believed that uh, there are certain other elements. Uh, perhaps they really want both the forces on both sides of the border uh, to be provoked and end up uh, getting into some sort of a physical clash. Okay, so you're, you're talking about um, smuggling. One of the biggest issues that we have is that the main outlet uh, for heroin trade and uh, opium and ashish, you know, all these narcotics is through Pakistan and Iran. Obviously, it has to come through the border. That would really, really impact the drug smugglers and, and uh, the, the drug lords there in Afghanistan, which would impact their local economies. So that it's not in their interest. They have direct linkages with the, the terrorists, without a doubt, because that's the nexus between crime and terrorism. Uh, it, they, they work together with each, uh, with each other. The other aspect is the Afghan uh, Transit Trade Treaty, for example, that we have. A lot of the goods do go into Afghanistan. Many are smuggled back into Pakistan without having been taxed. These are the issues that we've got to face because they're being sold on a cheaper rate in Pakistan without having faced taxes from Pakistan. And as a result, it goes against the interests of the government as well. So we have to look at these many different aspects of this. Uh, and it's an ongoing situation. The border fence will reduce uh, such smuggling, but I don't think it will uh, completely cut it out. I think um, capable, uh, there are many groups that are quite capable and have many resources that can cut through the fences, and the, the, the border is very long. It can't be patrolled every single point uh, by the soldiers, unfortunately. Um, so, so it, again, it's a cat and mouse game between the smugglers, the terrorists, and the Pakistan Armed Forces, for example, trying to maintain certain amount of security within Pakistan. Um, Afghanistan has been taken over by the Taliban, but in no way whatsoever is it secure as a country yet. They have a long way to go before they secure that country. And that, those small vacuums that occur along the border areas or other parts of the country will arise again and again whilst they clash with the government in Afghanistan. And 
they will exploit these areas to their own advantages and also to the detriment of Pakistan. I don't see that this is going to be a, a short driven issue. It's going to take time for it to uh, ferment and reduce over time. And policies will change as a result because the relationships between the two countries may change drastically depending on a situation that may occur at any point in time. We have to be wary about that. All right. Now, Afri, a couple of important points. One is also about the human trafficking. Uh, which we haven't talked about so far and secondly is about the second one is again another very important aspect kidnapping for ransom sir mm. i mean when there is a fence you can't move from this part to that part that part is considered to be a safe haven for all these people historically you go back 100 years or you talk about the recent history sir this has been the case do you think that uh, i would say that means of income has also been stopped because of the fencing sir uh, both uh, these issues are really important. Um, as uh, we know that this border is porous, it is uh, going through mountainous terrain. Mm -hmm. So no doubt uh, that uh, it's very difficult to have uh, monitoring on this uh, border. So the question of uh, uh, human trafficking that is there, the question of rent some money, uh, you know, the kidnapping <coughs> that is there. So, of course, it can also minimize uh, in even um, almost it can finish these uh, practices uh, as well. So, those forces, for example, the, who are um, involved uh, in these activities, either that is the human trafficking or the kidnapping, so uh, those forces can be uh, vanished uh, um, through the practice. And uh, of course, uh, for have more chicken billions, so n there can be discontinuity in these practices. And uh, uh, this thing, uh, there's also on the agenda of the uh, United Nations, uh, also on the agenda of the uh, international community, uh, especially the major powers that have, uh, because of human trafficking, that's n not only here, mostly that is in Europe. <coughs> uh, you, we know through Iran and through Turkey, through Greece, and people go there to Germany, Austria, Italy, and other European countries, and they want to earn their, you know, uh, livelihood over there. So uh, that is uh, also there between Pakistan and Afghanistan. And uh, important thing uh, uh, that is the kidnapping issue. <coughs> so um, in this, uh, um, you know, war on terror period, uh, the disturbance we have seen. <coughs> and, uh, on both sides in Pakistan smuggling and Afghanistan. Smuggling of vehicles for that matter was another. So many other things. You talk things. about the fuel smuggling coming yes. in from Iran. Yes, yes, that is there. Yeah. That is even still there's yeah. going on at the Taftar <coughs> border. So uh, in this war on terror pe period, the so, so much disturbance we have seen on both sides of Pakistan right. and Afghanistan. And uh, kidnapping of so many people, uh, even uh, all of us, we are witnessed, you know, that uh, medical doctors and some important personalities, do those who so are kidnapped. So many professors from so many universities. Prof yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So this is there, and of course, it can be minimized to a larger extent. Sir, last closing comment from you. Yeah, number one, uh, let me a bit uh, clarify it that the, before 9-11, the whole FATA crime rate was less than a police station mm. in the settled area. Yes. So crime was not by the tribes. So 9-11 was a different ball game. Second. Second thing as far as the kidnapping or these uh, smuggling and all these things. So bring reforms, provide the opportunity of earnest living to the people so that they should not indulge in, indulge in that unless that is done so you cannot stop the water from going to one place unless you An channelize, should you be to channelize it and they channelize it hmm. that first of all enable them mainstream them give them reforms yes. build them and then of course if it is there it could be stopped otherwise if you leave them on one side the fencing and no no livelihood so what they will be doing Naturally, the crimes comes or the smuggling comes. That is the only alternative. Mm -hmm. So we are to see both sides of the coin. There has to be some yeah. sort of an equilibrium. Yeah. And I think this issue is going to be resolved soon. Uh, as the government also recently stated that uh, it is a matter of, uh, I mean, it's not a grave issue. But it is, such. I suppose, uh, a misnomer rather a bad conception that you are putting all this smuggling, men, tra men trafficking 
and uh, all these sort of all crimes right. and all he right. put on fatha mm. that right. is a wrong my last quick, point quick. in continuation of brigadier mm -hmm. sahib's statement there are you know fatha the ex fatha now tribal areas they are so much you know rich in mineral resources if factories are mm. set up over there and people they were given Sir, jobs we also learned that the mm. americans would end up uh, mm. having some sort of uh, economic zones out there mm. and but yeah. nothing happened that is what no, promises it, are it, always. It, it, no, it can bring trillion dollars has gone only to the pockets. Imagine. Not. Imagine, <laughs> sir. Yeah. Anyway, Brigadier Saab, thank you so much for your uh, time, you. sir. Yeah. Afri Saab, thank, thank you so much for your time as well. And uh, Kaab Malik, it was a pleasure having you in the show, sir. Thank you so much for your time as well. And that's all we have for this, sir. I'll see you, inshallah, tomorrow at 8.05. Till then, you take good care. Khuda Hafiz.